Shalom, Israel. <clears throat> We're going to get right into it. Um, This lesson is on our brother Shaul or Paul. And basically what we're going to talk about is who was Paul. We're going to go over some things about our brother who wrote a lot of scriptures after the death of our Hamashiach. And we're going over this for a couple of reasons. One for um, Hebrew Israelites that could be lost with the misinterpretation of what our brother was, Paul, and also for those Christians that take some of his writings and they twist those things for their own destruction. And we also find Hebrew Israelites that do that thing. They twist those scriptures. They'll twist what's in the old covenant as well as what Paul's writing is to explain that covenant too. Uh, for example, um, there's one gentleman you'll find on his channel called Baptized Scribe, and he talks a bunch of foolishness about Paul being a false apostle, this, that, and the third. And again, we're going to just try to get some clarity on who our brother was, and also, um, the life and the man that he wanted to be trying to follow Christ. And again, as us trying to be that remnant, the people of the book, that's the same thing that we should be doing, trying to buffer ourselves daily, making sure that we are the faith and we will be found worthy in our Messiah's eyes when he comes back and judge this thing. And so with that, we're going to get right in the word. We're going to go to Romans chapter 11, verse 1. Romans chapter 11, verse 1. And it reads, I say then, have God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. Verse number 2. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Woe, yet ye not what the scriptures say of Elias. He, how he make intersections to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Verse number five, even so, then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. So again, as you can see in uh, Romans chapter 7, um, I'm actually only talking to those that understand the law. That's the same thing Paul says. So a lot of people that even talk about Paul, he wasn't even talking to them. Because they don't even understand the law. More importantly, as he expressed on this, that the one we call Paul, Shaul, he says, I am that I am. He asked you a question, has he cast away his people? And he told you, Yah, I am forbid. So your creator, he forbid. He didn't cast away. And then Paul reaffirms this by saying that he's an Israelite of the seed of Abraham and the tribe of Benjamin. And in verse 5, he pushes this point home. Even so, then the present time, also there's a remnant according to election of grace. So that remnant, we understand that to be members of the tribe of Israel. To get to the point I want to get to, we're going to actually look at what is Benjamite. I mean, that's important. He tells us 
that's who he is. We're going to go to some other scriptures that really point out the point of who he is. But um, he tells us that he is a Benjamite. So if you look at Genesis 49, so let's get a good idea who Benjamin is. It starts off with, then Jacob called his sons and said, gather yourselves together. That I may tell you what shall happen to you in the days to come. Assemble and listen, O sons of Jacob. Listen to Israel, your father. Reuben, you are my firstborn. My might and thy. And he goes on to keep telling the different brothers of the house of Jacob. And again, when you see that terminology, the house of Jacob, that's all 12 tribes. See, sometimes you'll see the house of Israel now be the northern tribes, and then you'll see the southern house or the house of Judah, and now be three tribes. But here in Genesis 49, he had got all his sons together. We're going to skip down to Genesis um, 49, 27. And it tells us here, on 49, 27, in the book of Genesis, Benjamin is a ravenous wolf. In the morning, devouring the prey, and at evening, dividing the spoil. So we read that just to get a clear picture that Benjamin is one of the descendants of the house of Jacob. He is a part of the member of the tribe of Judah. But we're going to read some more scriptures to get an understanding of our what the tribe of Benjamin was. We're going to look at a uh, quick scripture in Judges 20. Verse 15, the book of Judges 20, verse 15. And the people of Benjamin mustered out of their cities on a day 26,000 men who drew the sword beside the inhabitants of Gehath, who mustered 700 chosen men. Verse 16, among all these were 700 chosen men who were left-handed, Everyone could sling a stone at a hair. We're going to look at 1 Chronicles 8.40. 1 Chronicles 8, verse 40. And it says, The sons of Elam were men who were mighty warriors, bowmen, having many sons and grandsons, and these were Benjamites. First Chronicles 12, 2 Chronicles 12.2 They were bowmen and could shoot arrows and sling stones with either their right or their left hand. They were Benjamites. Saul's kinsmen. So the first king of Israel was a Benjamite. Um, as we see in First Chronicles 12.2 Saul's kinsmen were the Benjamites. Second Chronicles fourteen eight. In Asia had an army of three hundred thousand from Judah, armed with large shields and spears, and two hundred and eighty thousand men from Benjamin that carried shields and drew bows. All these were mighty men of value. Second Chronicles seventeen seven. Of Benjamin, Elida, mighty men of valor, with 200,000 men armed with bow and shields. Judges 19, verse 1. And you can read that down to verse 20, but just a good understanding. Judges 19, verse 1. In those days, there were was no king in Israel. A certain Levite was serving, soldiering in the remote parts of his hill country in Ephraim, who took to himself a concubine from Bethlehem and Judah, and his concubine was unfaithful to him, and she went. So here he talks about Judah and Benjamite and those tribes in that land. Benjamin's blessing was three parts. Compared to a wolf, his blessing was two times frames 
morning and evening. It was two actions. Devouring and dividing. Two outcomes. A prey and a spoil. This sets up two types of before and after. Experience of Benjamin and his offspring. The scriptures show at least four great people came from Benjamin's tribe. Even though it was the smallest of the twelve tribes. See in 1 Samuel 9 through 21. Saul answered, I am not a Benjamite from the least of the tribes of Israel. And is not my clan the humblest of all the clans of the tribe of Benjamin? Why then have you spoken to me in this way? Again, I'm going to read it one more time. 1 Samuel 9.21 Saul answered, Am I not a Benjamite? From the least of the tribe of Israel. So the smallest in number. And is not my clan the humblest of all the clans of the tribe of Benjamin? So within that big tribe of Benjamin, he was even a smaller clan of Benjamin. And that, that tribe that he said he was from, that clan, that clique that was inside of Benjamin, was even the smallest. Esther, the book of Esther, chapter 2, verse 5 through 7. Now there was a Jew in Susia, the citadel, whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jer, the son of Shema, son of Kish, a Benjamite, who had been carried away from Jerusalem among the captives, carried away in Jerusalem, king of Judah, who Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried. So as we keep looking at these different scriptures, we're getting a clear picture of when um, our brother Paul claimed to be a Benjamite. Tracing that all the way back to the seed of Abraham. So when Abraham copulated with Sarah, and made that bloodline. And from there, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, that house of Jacob, three different generations, and all the 12 brothers came out of that tribe. That's who he links himself up to. The past, and as well as the future. As I said, it'd be two different parts. So Revelation 7 and 8. Revelation chapter 7, verse 8. And it goes here when um, the Most High is going to sail and save those. And it says he'll sail 12,000 from the tribe of Zebulon. 12,000 from the tribe of Joseph. 12,000 from the tribe of Benjamin. Were sailed. If you look at Ezekiel chapter 48, verse 32. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 48, verse 32. On the east side, which is to be 4,500 cubits, three gates. The gate of Joseph, the gate of Benjamin, and the gate of Dan. And one of the last scriptures we're going to look at here is Revelations 21, 12 through 13. We're going to the last end of towards our prophecy from one of our brothers that was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And then we will say our Hamashiach, as some of us will say, Yeshaya, which means salvation in Hebrew, was born to our 12 tribes, our nation, to save us from our sins, which was born to be named Emmanuel, God with us. And as if you have learned, if you're that remnant, he is now, which all will be, your Yeshua, your salvation from your sins. Well, as we read Revelation 21, verse 12, 
It had a great high wall with twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and on the gates the names of twelve tribes of the sons of Israel were inscribed. Thirteen on the east, three gates, on the north, three gates, on the south, three gates, on the west, three gates. All right. So Benjamin is a great study. The tribe of Benjamin itself is a great study if you want to learn how to worship the Most High in spirit and truth. First, I am that I am. The creator, the Most High of the heavens and earth. At some point we call him in English God. Some call him Yah. He doesn't see as men see, for I am, looks at the heart. Ahia, which means I am, saw a warrior inside of Benjamin. Outwardly, others saw him as the youngest son, at his tribe, as the smallest tribe. But the creator, the most high, your Elohim, I am that I am, saw more. A man who would both devour and divide. The second lesson for us lies with the two Saul's, who came from the tribe of Benjamin. King Shaul, or Saul, by his own nature, kept warring against the Most High. Your Creator, your Elohim, he kept warring against the laws that the Most High gave him. Even the second Shaul, who we'll get to, talks about in Romans 7, verse 25, I think it is, talks about the two wars, the two things fighting inside you, the, the law of the Most High, and then the law of sin and death. King Saul even wanted to kill David. Even when David went to spare his life, King Saul still saw off his own lust and desires. King Saul was supposed to kill all of the people and decided to keep the king of that people for show and let all his other people some of his Benjamites and other tribe of Israel keep some of the spoils, even after that was against the wishes of the Most High. So like the Most High tells you in different scriptures, you're neither hot nor cold, but since you're lukewarm, I will spew you out. That are some of the great examples you'll see of King Saul, who was a Benjamite, who was from the tribe of Israel, who was from the house of Jacob. Now we'll go and skip to the second one. Shaul. And again in the English tongue, a lot of us call him Paul. Whose nature was changed by, as some of us call him Ahia. Some call him Yah. The great I am. The most high. The creator of the heavens and earth. No matter what kind of title we're trying to give to him. We won't explain it enough. That's the reason why he tells you, I am who I am. Now he changed from a murderous Pharisee to an apostle that taught repentance and grace and coming back into the laws and statutes and commandments. Shaul, or Paul, is the example of what your creator does to those who come to him in faith, who have true repentance and change. He even told him in his infirmities is where he will be able to find the creator. He'll be even the things that were inside of him. Those were the things you'll find. You'll find the most high dwelling in him because he actually prayed for the infirmities to be taken away from him. 
So when we look at him saying that I am a Benjamite, and there's so many people that want to get away from what that really means and what that is, we understand that Brother Paul, he did not. And can you blame him? Because he traces it all the way back to that seed, and he talks about that remnant. And we understand that thing that he's talking about in verse 5, that remnant. Even in those last days, that remnant, he says, in Revelation, will be saved. He will seal those. So, me being an educated man, wanting to follow these scriptures, I wouldn't want to cast away my birthright either and call myself something else. So, Paul was true that he was a Hebrew Israelite. But we'll go to a couple more verses to get a good understanding. Of what Paul was talking about. Uh, we're going to go to 2 Corinthians. Chapter 11. We're going to start at verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Verse 16. We're going to go down to about 22. And it reads. I say again. Let no man thank me a fool. If otherwise. Yet as a fool receive me, that I may boast myself a little, that which I speak, I speak and not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly in this confidence of boasting. Seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. For ye suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourself are wise. For ye suffer if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak. How be it, were in so ever, and he is bold, I speak foolishly. I am bold also. Verse 22. Are there Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Verse 23. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant. In stripes above measure. In prison more frequent. In deaths off. So. In 2 Corinthians, verse 16 and 22, one thing he made plain, there's people in the past as well as people to this day, looks like I point out, baptized the scribe, they run their mouth, talking foolishly to their fools. And one question he put out there, do they labor more than me? I think not. Did they receive more stripes than our brother Shaul for this word? I don't see um, the scribe talking about what stripes he's got for this word. Has he been in prison for this word? So again, we're going to look at another scripture that even talks about when some of the Jews beat him down for this word. But in verse 22, to make it so good for you Christians, for people that are confused of what the brother was, they act, he asked a question, are they Hebrews? And if you didn't know nothing else, you couldn't find no other Hebrew, you know he was saying, I am. He says right here, I am, so am I. He was a Hebrew. Was he an Israelite? He says, I am. 
So he was a Hebrew Israelite. We're going to go to Philippians chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. Philippians chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. And we're going to go for, um, yeah, verse 4. Thought I might also have confidence in the flesh. If any other man thinketh that he hath whereof, he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and the Hebrews of Hebrews. As touching the law, a Pharisee. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness, which is the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I might win Christ. And this keeps going on. He even talks about the power of the resurrection. But again, he he confirms that him being circumcised on an eighth day him being of the stock, that means the family, that lineage of Israel, from the tribe of Benjamin. He was a Hebrew of Hebrews. So for that, this part right here, we just wanted to make it clear of who Paul was. When he tells you he was a Hebrew Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin, and everything that he was teaching was for him to be a part of that remnant which so many are supposed to be teaching today but they come up short because there's only one faith there's only one baptism there's only one church that's the same church that um, dwelt in uh, Mount Sinai the one that got those laws, statutes, and commandments the one that's supposed to be now living by the spirit that should be praying daily for the Most High that get away that stone of heart and give you a fleshy stone to rewrite those laws and your heart and your mind so you can keep that as a covenant. That what was Paul was talking about. So, that is the picture of who he said he was. That was the spirit of what he said he was. As we continue on this video, the next thing we're going to look at is what Paul looked like, his image, what he looked like. And then the last thing we're going to go over is some of the things that he taught. Did he taught against being a Hebrew Israelite? Did he taught that there was Gentiles over the Hebrews now? Or did he teach the same thing that was in the word from the beginning? So everything we're talking about right now is just about Paul being a Hebrew Israelite. So we're going to do this in three different parts. I'm going to go ahead and edit this one and then we're going to come back and go to the second part about what Paul actually looked like. So Shalom and we'll be back in a second. Who is and is to come, a come. 
to worship and magnify your name. I've come to worship and magnify All right, as we get into the second part, we're going to look at what color was Paul. Or as we would say, Shaul. We're going to use just a couple of scriptures. Acts 13. Acts 21. A bunch of Hebrews fighting in Acts 21. And after they were fighting, Paul was in the midst of that. The Soterions, the Greeks, the Italians, whatever name you want to put them to. They broke up the fight. And at the end of the fight, when he said he was going to speak to him in Greek, they said, aren't you that Hebrew Israelite? Aren't you that Egyptian? So what we're going to use is a short little video of a black man fighting a bunch of other black men. And then we're going to put a picture of the police stopping it. And then we're going to go back to the word. All right, here we go. Acts 21, verse 18. And the day following Paul went in with us unto James, and all the elders were present. Verse 21. And they informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews, which are among the Gentiles, who forsake Moses, saying they ought to not to circumcise their children, need to walk after their customs. What is it therefore? The multitude must needs come together, for they will hear that that thou art come. Verse 26. Then Paul took the men, and the next day purifying himself with them entered into the temple to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification. Until that an offering should be offered for every one of them. And when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews, which were of Asia, when they saw him in the temple, stirred up all the people and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man that teaches all men everywhere against the people in the law, 
in this place and further brought Greeks also into the temple and have polluted this holy place. For they had seen before with him in the city of Trimophius and Ephesians, whom they supposed that Paul had brought into the temple. And all the city was moved, and the people ran together, and they took Paul and drew him out the temple. And forthwith the doors were shut. And as they went about to kill him, tidings came unto the chief captain of the band that all Jerusalem was in an uproar, who immediately took soldiers and centurions and ran down unto them. And when they saw the chief captain and the soldiers, they left beating of Paul. Then the chief captain came near and took him and commanded him to be bound with two chains and demanded who he was and what he had done. And some cried one vein, some another among the multitude. And when he could not know the certainty of the tumult, he commanded him to be carried into the castle. And when he came upon the stairs, so it was that was born of the soldiers for the violence of the people. For the multitude of people followed after, crying away with him. And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said, Unto the chief captain, may I speak unto thee, who said, Canst thou speak Greek? Art not thou that Egyptian? So the last scripture we're going to read about the color. Again, not his nationality, what nation he belonged to. The nation he belonged to was Hebrew Israelite. The last one we're going to go on is his color. And we're going to go to Acts 13, chapter, verse number 1. Acts 13, verse number 1. And it reads, Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers. Who were they looking at? They were looking at some of the prophets. And we understand who the prophets were in the past. Isaiah, Ezekiel, Daniel. They were looking here at the prophets and the teachers in Acts 13. As Barnabas and Simeon. That was called Niger. Alright, hold up. So prophets and teachers, they thought they were, they called them Niger's. You can go ahead and say the word nigger right there if you want to. Some people even believe they used to have a place called Niggerland. I don't know how true that is. I don't confess to believe I know that map they have where they got Niggerland is true. But the word Niger is close enough. I'm looking at the images on your computer. We can see what the Nigers looked like in the past and what they look like today. So they believed they were Nigers. Continue with the reading from Acts 13, verse 1. Lucius of Cyrene and many which had been brought up with the Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. So these brothers were getting down together, serving our Hamashiach, keeping those commandments, keeping feast days. You see in Acts 18, Acts 20, as Shaul, our brother Paul says, Christ is our Passover, therefore keep the feast. We know they thought they looked like the Egyptians. They knew they looked like Nigers. So their color was that of a black race. With this part, we're going to end. We'll finish with the last part of this. Um, did Paul speak that there is no separation between the Jews and the Gentiles? Did he speak that they were all of one accord? Or do you keep with the same commandments that you find in your Torah, which is the instructions and the guidance and the law of our Hamashiach? So we will go with that. We will look at everything from Romans. We'll look at things from Galatians. And we'll see 
if the commandments in Paul's mind were for the Jew first and then to everything that came after. And again, they had to keep the commandments of the Most High. With that, this is the first part. We'll finish with the second part, hopefully this week. Shalom and peace to the 12 tribes of Israel. Scattered to the four winds and to the northern tribes of Israel that's still in that land we call Africa. Shalom.